Hi, my name is Alan Prost and I'm going to introduce you to the SIPAP mechanical ventilator today. Its primary use is for neonatal patients. So we use this on neonatal patients usually to deliver uh, nasal CPAP or just continuous CPAP. All right. It does have many other options. It can be used as an IMV device, which means it can give intermittent mandatory ventilation. It does have the ability with a special uh, sensor to synchronize with the baby's inspiratory efforts, but this hasn't seen a lot of clinical use. Its primary use is to deliver nasal CPAP or a continuous positive airway pressure. So let me show you how that's set up. Initially, before we get going, I'd like to put the circuit on first thing. It's a heated circuit, so we've got our fish decal heated inspiratory line here. Now we need to get our gas from the ventilator, so it just hooks up right here, to the humidifier. And then from the humidifier to the patient. So we've got a heated circuit. All right? And it does come with the, it's a specialized heated circuit. And it does come with the special fittings on the end to hook up directly to the specialized patient connector, which I'll show you in a second. So this just hooks up right to our Fisher Pay Cal. Right here, just like that. Okay. And I've got my pressure monitoring line. It's also going to hook up directly to the ventilator. So I'm going to take our pressure monitor line and hook it up to my proximal pressure right here. Okay. Now I've got the special patient circuit, and this is really the heart of the CYPAP device right here. And this, you can fit a specialized nasal mask or these little kind of like nasal prongs, and I'll show you some of those in a minute. All right. And that's our patient interface. And this part here hooks up directly to my circuit just here, and with a little nice firm click, there we go, it just hooks up right onto there. Okay? So the gas flow coming from the ventilator up through this narrow line, right to this kind of little flip flop device here, and back against our pressure manometering line back to the ventilator. So I'm going to just set this off to the side right now, keeping that clean. We want to hook up our humidifier. So we've got our humidifier lines here, okay? So first thing we want to hook up is we've got to get power to our circuit. So we'll hook up our... Okay. So now this only has an inspiratory line that's heated, okay? So you're only going to be hooking up just the inspiratory line. Hooks up right here on the back of the circuit. Next, we need our temperature probes. If we're going to deliver heated humidity, we want heated humidity. We want to make sure it's at the right temperature. Okay, so we've got a heated probe here just fitting in. Make sure that's nice and tight in there. And our last temperature probe, close to the patient circuit, right close to the patient, but outside the isolate, because the heat from the isolate might inadvertently shut off our heated humidity. All right. So that's the basic circuit all set up here. And now I'm going to show you how to do the quick checkout on the SIPAP device. Okay. So we've got it hooked up to the wall outlets on air and oxygen. And that's because it has a built-in blender right here. The blender can be set to whatever FiO2 I want. Okay. So I've got my circuit basically set up. So let's power it up. Turn the power on. It's just a switch up here in the back corner. It does a little self-test when we first get going. Right. Now I've turned the flows off, okay? So I've turned them all the way clockwise so there's no flow going through the device at this time. All right. So we'll need our patient little connector right here. And it's asking me now, right now, to do my checkout. So it actually prompts you to do your little checkout. You can come in here a little closer so you can see that screen. All right. So the first thing we want to do is check our nasal CPAP out. So I'm going to set the nasal CPAP flow to 8 liters per minute. Alright? Now, when I occlude our little flip-flop gate here, when I occlude where it goes to the patient, and I'm just going to put in a, a little patient connector there just to make it a little easier. And I'm picking um, whatever size. I think this is the large. Alright? Just a little nasal prong there. And I'm just going to put my fingers over that. Alright? Just like that. Now you'll notice that this pressure is reading 5, and that's just what I'd need for the checkout. So that means that at 8 liters per minute, I'm getting plus or minus 1 centimeter water pressure, 5 centimeters of water pressure built up in my circuit. 
So I'm going to just touch this. Okay, it's past that. Now it's asking, make sure you set the FiO2 appropriately for your patient. Now I can calibrate a built-in oxygen analyzer just by hitting this cal button in here, but we don't actually have this ventilator hooked up to oxygen right now. So I'm just going to disable the oxygen analyzer component. But it does say, do I want to have it set up the correct FiO2 for my patient? So I'm going to hit yes for that. All right. Now it says, what about my high pressure or my pressure control level? Do I have that set? So I'm going to add some flow now, and I'm going to set that at 3 liters per minute. All right. And at 3 liters per minute, this should go up to plus or minus 1 centimeter of water pressure to 8. All right. So I've set up my high pressure at 8 and my CPAP pressure at 5. Okay, that's not a bad place to start. Okay, so I'm going to check that off. Now it says, my, I, have I attached my sensor? I haven't, but I've checked to make sure that I'm not going to be using it. So it only offers me certain modes right now. And one of them is right where I want to start, nasal CPAP. So if I had a patient, I'm ready to utilize the ventilator for its primary purpose, which is nasal CPAP. Now, you can just silence the alarms just by touching the touch screen there, and it'll silence the alarms. Then get your patient, all right? Now, we get a wide variety of different sizes of patients, and this little card here gives me the ability to kind of estimate quickly, both from the size of the nares and the size of the nose, which mask I might want to use. And it's got some really nice little nasal masks like this, which could just nicely fit right over the nose of my patient in a variety of sizes. This is the extra large. All right. And they come really, really small. This is the small here, so much too small for this patient. Now, the nasal prong parts also come in a wide variety of different sizes from small to extra large. So pick the appropriate one for your patient. Now this is where it's kind of nice to have two people involved in putting this on your patient. The first part is just putting on a little toque for your baby. All right? And this is going to help keep the nasal CPAP in place. Put on a little toque. All right? And then I've chosen what I think is the the large size on this particular baby, the appropriate size um, nasal prongs, and I'm going to gently apply those to my patient. Now this is where it's kind of nice to have two people, because one person can kind of hold them in place like this, while the other person is attaching the, uh, the circuit properly. And so there's just some little fittings here, um, so you can slide through these little foam pieces, and that'll help hold the mask and the nasal prongs in place, just like this. Of course, I'm going to be watching my patient's sats all the time. If they require a little bit more FiO2, I can turn them up a little bit, up and down like this. All right. So we've got this attached gently to my, my patient, nicely in the sniffing position. Got a good fit here doesn't have to be a perfect fit around the nose. That's one of the nice things about this. It has the ability to compensate for even um, quite a bit, quite large leaks. So let this go like that. Now I'm going to fine tune my level of CPAP with my flow. Right? So by increasing the flow, I can bring up my CPAP pressures to what I want to have delivered for my patient. In this case, we're going to target five. Oh, well, maybe we should go up to six. All right. So I can target my CPAP pressure by adjusting the flow, and that's, a, that's one of the key elements of the CPAP device. If I only wanted 4 centimeters of water pressure, I'm going to cut down the flow until I just see a nasal CPAP pressure of 4. All right. Now, like I mentioned, this ventilator has the ability to be biphasic or to be an IMV device. So the way you would search, set that up is you just go into the biphasic mode here, just pushing that button. And that's the way I can set up my T high, or my inspiratory time, and a rate. So let's say I wanted to set up a T high of, we'll make it 0.5 seconds. It could be as long as even 
0 0.3, 0 0.5, whatever you choose clinically. And then I can set a rate here by switching rate and then using the up and down arrows to adjust the rate. So right now I've got them on a backup rate of 40, and I click in my biphasic. And now if you watch your screen here, you can see that it's oscillating, giving me a ID ratio of 1 to 2, shows me the ID ratio, a rate of 40, and my T high is 0.5 seconds. So right now it's giving biphasic ventilation. It's not responding to the patient's inspiratory efforts. It's just mechanically going from the, your CPAP to your high pressure, CPAP to your high pressure. Okay? So if I want to go back in and change the mode again, I'm going to use mode control. And now I'm just going to switch back to just straight nasal CPAP. All right? And it just says, and I confirm that by selecting the nasal CPAP. And now you'll notice I'm just getting a nice, even, continuous CPAP. Okay? That's actually one of the huge things and advantages about this mechanical ventilator. The huge thing is that it gives very, very effective nasal CPAP. Even when the patient's breathing in and out, it synchronizes very well with them, and you don't see much fluctuation in the CPAP pressures delivered at the back of the pharynx. All right? Adjusting that with the flow. Okay. So, we've got nasal CPAP, we've got straight IMV, and it does have the option on this mechanical ventilator to synchronize the, the mechanical breaths with the patient. Now, I mentioned it's not often used, but you need a little sensor, this little pressure sensor right here, to do that effectively. Hooks right in here up at the front. Okay. Smart enough to know that it's hooked up. You also need this little abdominal sensor for your patient. All right. So, that's hooked up to the pressure line right here, just tightly fits in there, okay? Now, this has to be hooked up to the abdomen of your patient, all right? So, usually some place that gets good inspiratory and expiratory effort, all right? So it can pick up that changes. So usually just down here in the abdomen below the rib cage is one of the best places to put it. You have to put a little bit of tape across that so it'll pick up that inspiratory effort. So when the patient breathes in, all right, the abdomen's pulled down, this should be this should trigger the this pressure device right here. Okay? As the abdomen, as the diaphragm pulls down, the abdomen's distended, pushing against this. Okay? So now it says, okay, you've got your biphasic triggered. Let's set that up on our patient. Alright? It says what is your T high? Alright, you can set your T high. And I've got it at 0.3 seconds. You can set your, um, your breath per minute. And I'm actually going to increase that a little bit to about, we're going to make it 20 breaths per minute. All right? And then it says, what is your apneic period? So how long should it wait between breaths, because it's trying to synchronize with your patient, before you trigger it? All right? It's got here 20 seconds. I'm going to decrease that to, say, 15 seconds. It only has got a few defaults. It's got... 10, 15, and 20, all right? Let's go with the 15 seconds. Confirm we want biphasic now. Shows me what I've got here. So every time the patient breathes in and creates a little bit of pressure against that sensor, this ventilator will pick that up as a sensitized breath. So you can actually watch that on the screen, and you can see when it's picking up. If the patient goes apneic for more than 15 seconds, it'll just kick in and give your backup rate to whatever you've got established there. All right. Now, the alarms on this ventilator, they're set automatically. You don't have to do anything to set up the alarms. Okay? You notice once our apneic period is um, uh, gone through, so it's been more than 15 seconds, it kicks in giving us the backup rate of 20 and gives us an alarm. All right? You can silence the alarm just by tapping it. All right? Now, if the patient starts breathing again, you're going to reestep the alarms, and it'll be green. All right? Once the patient starts picking that up again. Now, the limitations of this are that you need this little pressure sensor to make this work. And it's never worked very effectively. That's the problem. It can be moved, and uh, any, any kind of movement by the patient can be triggered as a respirations, um, handling the patient, 
if they're lying on it, it sometimes alters the performance of it. So it hasn't seen a lot of clinical use. The number one use of this particular device, I'm going to switch modes here, is nasal CPAP. All right? And we're just going to confirm that nasal CPAP mode just as we see it set up here right now. The alarms are established automatically and depending on the CPAP level. So if you're at four, it's usually about plus or minus two. If you're at five or six, it can be a little bit more variation. All right, depends on how much CPAP you have set up on your, on your patient. All right? Very simple to use, very effective, whether you're using either the mask fitting for your patient or the little nasal prongs fitting for your patient. And the secret of this device, the heart of this machine, is this little flip-flop gate that's right here, right at the nose. That's what makes this work so well. As the patient breathes in, it flips back and forth very effectively to make sure it's always delivering just the right amount of pressure, whether it's on inspiration or exhalation. One last thing I would mention about this uh, ventilator here, you do have the ability to give a manual breath. All right? And that manual breath will go to whatever pressures you had set on the high pressure here, okay? So it shows you what they are here, it shows you what your alarm limits are gonna be. And I can increase that a little bit by turning up that flow. So now I'm giving a little bit larger pressures for my manual breath. Okay, so that in a nutshell is the CYPAP neonatal infant ventilator primarily used to deliver nasal CPAP. My name's Alan Prost, thank you very much.